Right, so over this video, I want to try out Devika, setting up Devika locally, which is an AI software engineer that can understand high-level human instructions. It's similar to Devin, right? So if you if you are if you came looking for this video, I'm sure you know what you are looking for at this point. So Devin is an application that can automatically write code, learn new things, update its model to you know fix those things and not encounter them in the future, and it can also do real jobs and Upwork all autonomously, right? So you just put in a prompt and it can autonomously do research, write code and so on and so forth. Now, Devika is a similar engineer, but it's open source, right? And it has all the major features that Devin does, except for the fact that it can not train its own model right now because it's, you know, it's not running on its own model. Rather, it's using either Claude 3, OpenAI and so on. But interesting thing, since I first made this video, I have noticed they've been trying to add supports for Olama. Olama is an open source AI framework that allows you to run these open source models like Llama 2, Mistral and so on and so forth. So we will be doing tests on GPT-4 model and you can see for optimal results they recommended using Claude 3 which I personally think is doing way better than GPT-4 now especially for code based things right. And you can see it can do all of those things. Advanced AI planning research, contextual keyword extraction, web browsing, information gathering, code writing and so on. So a bunch of different things that weren't possible earlier. So it seems that it is, again, a two-way installation. You have to first set up the backend and then you also have to set up the frontend. All right, let's get started, right? Setting the image up. So open the terminal if you're on Mac and type Olama serve, this will start Olama. And then start another terminal and say, first go to folder where you want to clone it. So I'm going to go to code folder and for going into in any of the folder, you need to do CD code, meaning, uh, let me show you. So if I'm here and I want to go inside of AG, then I'm going to go CD back and then I'm going to say CD AG. Then it goes inside AG folder. But if I want to come back, I'm going to do CD double dot. It will come back to the main folder and then I'm going to say CD code because that's where I want to clone it. So let me copy this and open the terminal again and then clone Devika. Once it's cloned, you need to go inside that folder. So Devika, CD Devika and then at this point, you can open Visual Studio Code. So you can do code dot, which will open Visual Studio Code. And you can see it has everything. So again, it is a two way in environment, right? So there is the front end and the back end. So first, let's try running the front end and we will open a new terminal here. We will create a virtual environment for Python. So let's say Python 3.11. This does not work for some reason. I think this is a package that I don't have. So I'm going to do what I know, minus M. VENV, -E what's the name of the environment? My environment. So you can see a new environment is created here. And I want to put all the libraries that I installed for this project for only this project, right? So if I were to install libraries without this, then it would install it in my entire computer. But I don't want to do that. I want to install everything I use inside of this, which is what I've done. So if you know, if you've been following our previous videos, you will know what I'm trying to say. Then we need to activate this environment. So CD, CD my environment, which is this folder. And then inside of bin, do activate. Oh, okay, not CD, we, we'd say source. So you can see my environment is now active. So whatever we now install goes inside. Next, do command shift P. And here you have to select your environment. So I'm going to be selecting my recommended environment. And at this point, uh, now I can start installing the requirements. And then let's do pip install requirements.txt. This will install everything from in here. So basically, these are the kind of things that we need in order to make our software engineer run. So let's just wait for a few seconds and let's wait for it to complete. So if you don't know what these are, by the way, these are all Python libraries. When you install Python, it comes with a bunch of different tasks that it can do. But if you want it to do more than certain things, so think of it like a mobile phone. When you buy a mobile phone, it will have a limited set of apps. But if you want more apps, you have to download it from Google Store. Similarly, when you install Python, it will come with a limited amount of things it can do. But if you want to do more things, then you have to also kind of, you know, install these libraries that allow it to do more things than usual. So let's also look at what is next. Then there is playwright install with dependencies. Anyway, so let's, while it's installing the requirements here, let's also set up the UI side. I'm going to do plus here, which will open another terminal. So again, Python is a backend language that will run tasks like, you know, calculating certain things and running certain things. But what you see on a website, so let's say you're looking at this, this is a front end. This cannot be done on Python. For this, you need to have a front end language like Java or Node.js and so on. 
So again, in here, go to CD UI, which means we go inside of the UI folder and seems this is Node.js, this is white code, swelled code rather, and I'm, I'm going to do bun install. So just like we did pip install, we do bun install. Bun, in, bun is again, Node.js way to install things. And you can see it's already installed it. And then when you run it, bun run dev, it's now running on localhost 3000. So if you open this, hopefully, there you go. So Devika is now running. Now we just need to set up the model and environment and so on to make all of this work. So the front end is running. Let's look at the back end. So the installation is also done. And you can see all the dots or lines that were under of these have gone, which means this installation is successfully done. I'm gonna go inside of this and I'm going to be running this command. Now I don't have to go back because I'm already in the Devika folder in this terminal. So when I dip, when I say Python 3 run Devika pi, this will run this file which will execute everything that it has in the file. Now it's initializing. I don't know how long that will take, but let's just wait for it to initialize. Let's refresh this by the way, and then create a new project. I'm hoping this is done. Now this is still installing. Again, it's downloading the model. You can see it's uh, downloading some sort of model. I'm not sure which model that is, but it's going to download a few things because we are also, you know, trying to run it on Ulama. So I'm sure it's going to download certain things. If it's using Llama 2, I already have that downloaded, but it's using BERT, it seems. So you can see BERT model has been successfully downloaded. BERT is again a model, I think, from Google that allows you to do some grammatical based things, but I don't know uh, what we are going to be doing. You can see it's running now and it's also connected to Olama, I think. Olama is available and then it says, okay, so it's basically now connecting front end to back end, meaning we are using Node.js to run this and Python to run the backend, which is a very interesting concept. Right now we can create a new project. Let's say some project and you can see it's created. Let's see if we can select the engine. You can select any of the engines. Let's say DuckDuckGo. And then you can select the model. Let's say if we have the Olama option, you can see we have Llama 2 options. I'm going to be selecting that. This is the browser. This is, I think the terminal where it will make tasks and this is where it will execute the code. So let's say we want to write a code for snake game in python it's taken the command here let's look at the terminal as well our visual studio code it's executed i mean it's taken the prompt but it's not doing anything right now so let's see what happens let's just wait for a few seconds i'm going to just go inside of this and see if we need to do anything else in the chat interface it does not say if i have to uh, add anything right now seems i will have to use keys for some of these, but I'm using DuckDuckGo, so I don't think I'll need, oh, okay, it's working. So you can see the code is running. If we go to Devika now, so you can see the step one is to research existing snake games and identify their strengths and weaknesses. Step two is to design games UI and user experience. Step three is to write games logic and implement code in Python, and then test thoroughly and runs, ensure that it runs smoothly. And then it's now br browsing the web, how, how to create and so on. Can you please provide useful examples? This is internal monologue, meaning it's talking to itself. I'm not sure if uh, it's waiting for my query, which I didn't anticipate. Snake came. So I'm just going to say snake came because that's what I know. And then you can see it also accepted that as the command. Mm -hmm. So it's talking, saying something about playwright. Did I miss a command? Yeah, it says I need to install playwright. So I'm going to be stopping this for a second. For stopping this, you do control and C and it'll stop it. And then let's do this. Playwright install with dependencies. Yeah, I missed that because in order to use the browser, you will need Playwright, which will allow you to, you know, in real time search the web and so on. So that's an important step we missed. My bad. It downloaded Chromium, which is what we'll need. It's also downloading Firefox, which is something also again we'll need in order to run this. FM, FPG, FMMPEG, by the way, is a audio MP4 library. So I'm not, not certain why it downloaded that, but I'm assuming it's for voice commands or something, but let's see. It's downloaded now and let's run Devika again. We do the exact same command, Python 3 Devika Pi. And then let's refresh it, right? And select the search engine again. But you know what? Let's also restart the backend. Again, you do control C and then put the command again, bun run dev, this will start it. And now it's connected to the backend. Let's do go, tuck, tuck, go and then Llama 2. And because that, the reason why it's running Llama 2 well right now with me is because I have already downloaded it. In order to download it, let me just quickly show you. You would do, you would start a new terminal and you would do Olama run Llama 2 and it will download the model. So ensure that if facing errors or you want to run specific model, you run this command 
And in order to download Ulama, if you've not followed our previous videos, you would go to ulama.com and then download the model from here. Anyway, so let's start a new project and let's say Python snake game. And let's say create a Python snake game. And this time, because we have also installed Chromium and Playwright, hopefully it should also start the browser in this window. Well, let's see. You can see it's taken the command. Now it's using Olama to serve the model. You can also look at the commands here, by the way. This is Olama serve. This will kind of show you, you know, all the commands that are running in the backend on Olama, right? So Olama is almost like an AI model that is processing these queries for you. So it made the plan. And then now it's going to run this step by step. You can see the agent status is active and then it's saying, okay, let's get started on Python snake game. Should now hopefully start developing the game. So it's waiting for my query snake game. Let's just see, because I don't know what <laughs> success of snake game Python would be. It says thanks, meaning it should now start doing the work. It's using DuckDuckGo for search now. So hopefully at this point it will, something happened here, by the way, I don't know what started, but something happened here and you can see the internet is active i don't know if it's you can see it's looking for the links but it's not putting those links here and it says there is some error hmm. interesting it's searching online but then it failed on one of the code please use async api instead and is it going to continue running or stop at this point hmm. so the code i think does not work let's see if i can look up it does not look like it's working Going to be putting in another query, what's going on. So hopefully it should start the execution again. Again, the goal is to see what happened. It kind of just stopped running. Nothing happened in the terminal. I can't type anything in the terminal. I'm also going to be tying an open API key just in case. And let's go in settings. So it looks like the application is kind of stuck. Mm. Going to be putting my open API key here. So in order to get your keys, just go to open slash platform.openai.com slash API keys and I'm going to be deleting this old key, generating a new test key. So you're free to copy and use this if you can remember what I'm pasting. But by the time you do this, I'm going to delete it. So no point really in doing that. Can't even paste it here. Can do I have to? Okay. So you have to click at it by the way. And then you paste it. And you save it. So the execution is apparently stopped. Seems um, after setting the API key, something happened here. Anyway, so let's create another one. Another try. With the OpenAI model, I'm assuming that the issue might have been with the Llama 2 model. So let's bypass that and try using OpenAI now. Snake in Python. Again, I don't think that was the issue because it stuck at execution point where it wasn't really about the Llama generating the response. But, you know, what can happen is, let's say, the uh, model gave it certain steps to execute and then because it did not have those capabilities, it stopped. Right. So I'm just going to uh, wait with the GPT-4 API now. And you can see, I, I think I can proceed without searching the web. And then it's now using GPT-4 API key in order to execute it. Then getting Pygame install shouldn't be too hard. I wonder what with the current version of Pygame after setup, the real fun begins. You can see there's some sort of code that came in from OpenAI. And it says I've completed my task. Would you like me to do anything else? It's seen wrote the code somewhere but i don't know where it installed the uh, library i can see a bunch of things were installed it installed the updated version of pip and then it installed setup tools and it did install a bunch of things and the execution was completed but i don't know where the code is where is the code <laughs> should ideally be running it here right uh for this let me provide you with the basic implementation of snake game Snake game dot py. So apparently it created a file which I can't find. You'll find the main game logic setup inside snake game dot py. I'm looking it up here. Can't find anything. Let me can't find anything here and either. So let's say py game because that's the package it installed. So I don't know where it saved the file. I think it did save it somewhere. Where is the file saved? Let me see if it can give me at least that. It says another try is the directory. Where is the directory? So it's the name of the project. I'm going to be just quickly looking it up in my local computer. Found it. it ins it's inside data projects. And then you can see this is the code. But it's not installed it because again, it did not install it inside of the environment. So let's run this again and say pip install py again. And now when we install it, it should hopefully the error should go. And if I run it now, you can see it's running the command. And the snake game is pretty good. 
Yep, it works with the keyboard instructions. Don't need to do anything else. But I don't see what was the uh, point in here. I'm going to say make it look fancier. Let's see if that works when this game is adapted. So I'm going to hold the recording until I, yeah, didn't need to do that. Anyways, let's tell it to when you add, can you make it look fancier? Add design and other things. All right. So now it should hopefully take the file again and add some design elements. Apparently, again, like I said, this is an end-to-end -end software, right? So this should definitely be able to do this. I mean, Snake Game, GPT can also write for me, but GPT can't design for me, right? It can't test it for me and all of that. So hopefully this should be able to do it. You can see it sent a token request to open here. By the way, if, if you don't want to run Llama right now, you can stop it because we are not using it right now. We're using OpenAI API, which will cost you money, by the way. So be careful with respect to how much you use. At some point, it's going to um, hit the credit limit. And it did encounter an issue with the code. Mm. And at this point, I think it will stop. Anyway, so I did try it out. And I don't think it's going to just change everything right away. It's good, but it's not as good as Devin's demo that we saw. Again, it's an open source implementation. So people are working on it right now. But at this point of time, I don't think it can be a problem for software developers at all. I mean, it can't write basic code, it can't run it well enough. So don't think anything is going to change in the software development space anytime soon. Unless they actually roll out Devin and it turns out to be magically fancy than this, but we'll just have to wait for it, right? So, all right, guys, thank you so much. And I hope this course video was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.